あの細い方をちぎって余ったチョコをつけて食べるという食べ方も。What's going on guys? Welcome back to Anime Kitchen, the show where we bring the food of anime and other media to life. Today's episode, we're going all the way back to 2003, the time of giant eyed anime and recreating chocolate cornets from Lucky Star. We're making a sweet buttery bread by hand and filling it with a luscious chocolate custard filling. Need I say more? Apron's on, let's go. To start off today, we're making our cornet dough. This recipe was adapted from a fellow YouTuber, Sweet The Me. Their channel is linked in the description. Into a large mixing bowl, we're combining 200 grams of bread flour, 50 grams of cake flour, 3 grams of salt, 50 grams of sugar, and one packet or 7 grams of instant dry yeast. Whisk all the dry ingredients together until fully combined and then make a well in the center of the flour before pouring in 120 milliliters of warm milk and crack in one large egg. Now with the wet ingredients added, we're going to mix everything together until it forms into a shaggy dough. Dust your work surface with bread flour before turning out the dough and then we're going to knead this for a solid 15 to 20 minutes by hand or about 10 minutes in a machine on medium high with a dough hook until it gets smooth and elastic. Unfortunately, I lost the dough hook to my KitchenAid when I moved houses last year and I haven't got around to buying another one, so that's why I'm stuck doing this the old school way. Now if you're going to be doing this by hand, keep a bench scraper within arm's reach because this dough is very sticky and you'll need the scraper to help gather the dough fairly frequently. Continue kneading the dough until it gets to the point where it starts to stick more to itself rather than the work surface and at that point you can begin lifting the dough before throwing it back onto the work surface and then pushing and rolling it away from you to knead it a bit more. Then you'll bring it back towards you and repeat that motion until you have a very soft and smooth dough which can stretch without tearing like I'm demonstrating here. Now that our dough has reached this point, we're going to pat it out into a disc before adding 40 grams of unsalted room temperature butter into the center. Gather up the edges of the dough towards the center and enclose the butter. Now we're going to start kneading this again until all of the butter is incorporated into the dough. If you thought things were messy before, it's about to get a whole lot worse. At first, this is going to feel completely wrong, the dough will look like it's fallen apart, and you may even be considering stopping cooking altogether because this is bullshit. But give it some time and you'll see that it will quickly turn into a very smooth dough. Once it has become one cohesive mass again, we're going to repeat that slapping and kneading motion we used previously until the dough is extremely smooth and elastic and it can again be stretched and pulled without tearing. Now, with our hands cupped like so, we're going to begin rolling the dough in a circular motion using our pinky fingers to push and tuck the bottom of the dough towards our work surface. This will result in the dough becoming taut as it's rolling underneath itself and the end result should look like this, a very smooth and soft looking ball of dough. Plop this baby into a bowl and cover with plastic wrap, leave it in a warm space and let it rest for 2 hours or until it's doubled in size. Now while the dough is resting we can focus on two things, firstly our moulds. For this recipe you're going to need cream horn moulds, you can buy metal ones like these, they cost about $5 for a set of 4 and they work fantastically. However, if you don't want to buy these or you can't buy them for whatever reason, you can instead make your own cream horn moulds at home, like these ones here. To make a cream horn mold, we're going to roll up a 15 by 15 cm square of card into a cone shape like so, before using a stapler to secure the horn mold into place. After that, you're going to simply roll this up in some aluminium foil, ensuring that the outer surface is completely covered. And there you have it, a simple DIY alternative to buying cream horn molds. If you want to reuse these, you can just replace the foil each time you need to use them. Now that our molds are made, we can shift our focus to the filling of our chocolate cornets, the chocolate custard. Into a saucepan we're pouring in 350 mils of whole milk which we're then placing onto a stove over low heat until the milk is hot and almost simmering. While the milk is coming up to temp we're going to make the rest of our custard base by whisking together 4 egg yolks and 85 grams of white sugar. Whip these together until the mixture is pale yellow and fluffy before sieving in 30 grams of cocoa powder and 20 grams of cake flour. Whisk everything together until fully combined. By the time you're done whisking the milk should be nice and hot and we can start tempering the eggs. Start by adding in half a cup of the hot milk into the egg mixture while constantly whisking. Once that's incorporated, add in another half a cup of hot milk and whisk until the egg mixture is warmed through and loosened. At this point we can add in the rest of the milk and whisk everything together, ensuring that everything is well combined before pouring the custard back into the saucepan through a sieve to catch any stray bits of cocoa powder or flour. Then return the saucepan back to the stove over a medium low heat while continually whisking. At first this mixture will be quite watery and thin, but after a few minutes you'll see that it thickens significantly. Once thickened, we're adding in 65 grams of good quality dark chocolate that has been chopped into small pieces and whisking that in until all the chocolate has melted. 
Turn off the heat and transfer this beautiful chocolate custard into a metal bowl. Place this bowl into a larger bowl of ice water and then mix the filling until it has completely cooled down before scraping down the sides of the bowl and then cover the filling with plastic wrap, ensuring to press the plastic wrap onto the surface of the custard so that it doesn't form a skin when cooling. Leave this in the fridge until you're ready to assemble. So, two hours later, you can see our gorgeous bread baby has grown up and doubled in size, so now we're going to lightly flour our work surface and very gently caress our dough before smacking all the air out of it, before turning out the dough and dusting it lightly with a bit more flour. At this point, if you want to be very precise, you can weigh out the dough to find out its total weight and then divide that dough accordingly into 8 to 10 equal size pieces. Once the dough is divided, we're going to roll each piece into a little ball. Start by bringing the edges of the dough to the center to make the base nice and taut, then invert that dough onto the palm of your hand so that the smooth side is facing upwards. Next, with your other hand, you're going to cup the dough and roll it in a circular motion in your palm, using your thumb to tuck the edges inwards towards the center of your palm. This should result in a small and smooth ball of dough. After you roll out a piece of dough, make sure to keep it covered underneath a piece of plastic wrap to prevent it from drying out. Repeat this process until all of your dough balls are formed and then you're going to cover them and let them rest for 15 minutes. Once the dough has had a second rest, we can begin forming our cornette. To start, we're taking one piece of dough and pressing it flat with the palm of our hand. Next, you're going to fold the dough towards you one third at a time, pressing down on the seams each time you make a fold. Once you've got a nice little log, you're going to roll it around a bit just to make sure that the bottom seams are adhering, and then we're going to set that to one side and repeat with the remaining dough. Once they're all formed, we're going to take one of the dough logs and roll it out into a thin log that measures between 30 to 45 centimeters, depending on how many rolls you want your cornets to have. With the rolled out dough, you're going to start at the tip of your horn mold, pressing the dough down to keep it secure, and then with your first roll, you want to ensure that that part of the dough overlaps with the tip to ensure that it doesn't flare out when baking in the oven. Then we're going to continue rolling the dough around the cream horn, leaving one to two millimeters between each roll as they will expand in the oven when baked. When you reach the end, again, you want to ensure that the end of the dough is tucked underneath that last roll to ensure it doesn't flare up when we're baking. Place this onto a lined baking sheet, ensuring where you tuck the dough is facing downwards on the sheet to prevent further the unraveling when baking, repeat with your remaining dough until all the cornets are formed and then you're going to cover these guys with plastic wrap and allow these to rest one more time until they've grown about 50%. This should take anywhere between 15 minutes and half an hour depending on how warm your house is. Once the dough has risen for the last time we're going to brush them down with an egg wash made from one large beaten egg with one tablespoon of water. Make sure they're all evenly coated with the egg wash and then when placing these guys in an oven preheated to 119 degrees celsius conventional or 170 degrees celsius fan force for 12 to 15 minutes. When they're done baking, they should have a beautiful golden brown exterior like so. Let these guys cool off for 5 minutes before transferring over to a wire rack to cool down completely. Once they've cooled down, we're going to gently coax out the cream horn mould. Simply wiggle the moulds from side to side gently and you should feel it release from the bread, at which point it should be very easy to slide out. Now let's take a moment to admire how beautifully these cornets came out. Now to finish these guys off, we're going to simply fill each of them with rich, gooey, chocolatey goodness. I've transferred the custard filling into a piping bag for more control, but if you don't have one, you could just use a snap lock bag and cut off one corner and it should do the trick. As a side note, if you make these and you need to transfer them, the best way to keep the custard from spilling everywhere is to simply place a piece of baking paper onto the filling and it will keep everything in place while you're transporting them. And there you guys have it, chocolate cornets from Lucky Star. We've worked extra hard today with all that kneading, so let's just dive right in. And I gotta say, these cornets are the embodiment of hard work pays off. The bread itself is very soft and fluffy and has a great buttery and sweet flavour to it as well. The sweetness is then enhanced by the rich, silky smooth chocolate filling, which on its own is already great, but together with the bread, it's phenomenal. While this recipe is definitely a lot of work, it gives you plenty of opportunities to practice various cooking techniques while getting a decent arm workout in as well. Which I really need since the gym has been closed since April. And if you're into this kind of thing, they're also a great flex for a dinner party if you want to show off your cooking skills. Do yourself a favour, set aside some time on the weekend, and make these. As always guys, thanks so much for watching today's episode. If you enjoyed it, let me know by dropping a like down below. Let me know in the comments what food from anime or other media you want to see me make in the future. Subscribe to the channel for a new video every week. And until then, roll up your sleeves, slap on an apron, and I'll see you in the anime kitchen. Peace.